How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I want to show you how to populate an HTML table using Ajax. So here we've got a simple HTML table with the content field using regular HTML. We've also got some basic CSS styling. So we're going to actually change this um, so it loads data from an external JSON file and then inserts it into the actual table body. So um, let's create that right now. So inside this source code for this um, page, it looks like this. So we have obviously um, this table here with an ID of rankings table and a class of um, table and we have the table head and also as I said um, that data which is filled by regular HTML. So nothing too special happening here. But in the JavaScript, um, we can now write some code to actually retrieve a JSON file and then load it into this table body element. So let's do that right now. Okay, the first thing to do is to actually get a reference to the actual table body. So we're going to be filling this part right here. So all the all the table rows inside the table body. So um, let's get a reference to this in JavaScript. So down here, let's make a new constant, which will be equal to, um, well, let's just call it, sorry, uh, rankings, rankings body, okay, which is equal to document.querySelector. Um, so we're going to select the um, rankings table ID, okay. And then, the, sorry, um, then the T body element inside there. Okay, so now if I was to console.log um, rankings body, we should see the T body element in the console. Let's refresh and we get that right there. Okay, so um, we can now create a function which will um, load and make a request to the JSON file. But first, let's make the actual JSON data file. So, um, let's make a new directory inside this project and let's call this one data. Okay, inside here, let's now make a, um, a JSON file containing the table, table data. So, um, let's make a new file inside here and we'll call this one, um, let's just say rankings.json. Okay, so inside here, this will be a standard JSON file um, containing only a large array. Okay, so let's put an array like that. So inside this array is going to be more arrays. So each array inside here is going to represent a single table row. So this right here is one table row. So back inside the example, we have ranking one, DOM, and 1,340 points. So um, let's just create this inside the JSON file. So we can actually just say one, comma, name is DOM, and he's got 1,340 points. Okay, so that is one table row complete. We can just condense this, we can shorten it a bit to make it like this. Okay, then we can put a comma and duplicate this about five times. Let's say ranking number two, name was um, Naomi, uh, points, let's just say 1120, and then so on. So three, let's call this person Stephen with points of 904. Um, let's continue here. We have John as well, 850, and finally we have someone called Mary um, with 712 points. Okay, so now we have all the table data prepared. So we can now load this into our JavaScript. So back inside here, um, let's write um, a function which will load the JSON file. Okay, let's get rid of this console.log. Okay, so Let's type out a new function inside here and we'll call this one load rankings. Okay, this will take no arguments. Inside here, 
we can now create the XML HTTP request object. So let's make a new constant and call this one request, which is equal to a new instance of an XML HTTP request. Okay, so down here, we can now um, open the request. So we can say request.open. Here you put, um, you put the request method. We're going to use a get request for this one. Okay, put a comma, and now you put the actual path of the JSON file. So we're going to say data forward slash rankings.json. So that is relative to um, the current directory. Okay, now we can specify what happens when the response comes back. So we can say request.onload equals a new arrow function. Okay, inside here, we're going to attempt to um, to pass the JSON file. All right, so we're going to use the JSON.pass method. So let's actually create a new constant, and we're going to call this one JSON. Okay, this will be equal to JSON.pass. Okay, inside here, we're going to pass in the response of the um, of the request. So we're going to say request dot response text, and this response text will be the actual JSON. So this right here. Okay. So um, let's just actually wrap this inside a try catch block because um, this JSON pass could potentially fail and throw an exception. So we're going to put a try block here and put all this inside there. Okay, so we're going to try and pass the JSON. Okay, down here, we are then going to um, uh, pass, or I guess, yeah, hand this JSON over to a different function, which will then actually populate um, the table using the DOM. Okay, so let's say populate rankings and then pass in the JSON. So we'll actually make this function um, uh, soon, okay? So, down here, let's put a catch, we'll pass in the error. Here, if something here fails, we'll just say console.warn, make a warning, we'll just say um, could not load rankings, with a sad face. Okay, so finally, we can now say request.send. So that will send out the request. All right. Um, we'll actually just create this function right now and then see the result in the web browser. So let's make a new function down here. We'll call this one populate rankings. This will take the JSON as an argument. We're simply just going to console.log the JSON for now um, just to actually see a result. Okay. Let's just save this and refresh the browser and see how we go. Refresh. We can now call the load rankings function. Okay, press enter here. And we get the data as a JavaScript array inside the console. So it's all loaded, ready to actually um, be converted or you know populated into this table. Okay. So Let's just make this function run when the page loads. So back inside here, um, down the bottom, let's just say um, we can add an event listener to the document object. So we're going to say document dot add event listener. We're going to listen for the DOM content loaded event. Okay. So once the entire DOM has been loaded, we are now safe to actually um, manipulate the DOM. So we'll just put an arrow function here, makes things cleaner. So when the content is loaded, we're going to load the rankings. Okay, perfect. So now saving and refreshing should see that instantly in the console. Okay, so let's now finish off this, um, this populate rankings function. So the first thing to do is to actually clear the existing table contents. So 
Um, this stuff right here is loaded using regular HTML. We're going to clear all this stuff out and then load this stuff in. So um, to actually clear it out, we can use a while loop. And we're going to say while um, the rankings body, which is that right there and that right there. So while the actual table body has a first child, okay, so it has one of these, then we are going to say rankings body dot remove child. We're going to remove the first table row. So rankings body dot first child. Okay, so we can just say here um, clears out existing table data. Okay, so saving and refreshing this one will give us that right there. So it is being cleared out. Um, if I was to actually create a um, an error inside here, for example, let's just um, let's just name this file to rankings one .json. So now this will actually um, cause an error. Okay. If I refresh this, we see that that stays. Okay. So let's just make that back to normal. Rankings .json. All right. So once the data has been cleared out, we can now populate the actual table. So let's go down here and make a new comment. We'll say populate table. Okay, so since this JSON is actually an array, okay, so um, it's it's a multi-dimensional array. We have um, let's just let's just console.log that real quick. So console.log JSON inside here. Save and refresh. So we have an array, right? of arrays. So we're going to actually loop through this first array um, to see every row. All right. So down here, let's say JSON dot for each. Okay. Then say for each row. So for each row, we're going to console dot log just for now, the row. We'll get rid of this, save and refresh. And we see we get every row printed out to the console, okay? Which is another array. All right, so we can now nest another for each function. Inside here, let's just say row dot for each. So for each row, we are going to, oh sorry, yeah, um, for each cell inside this, this row, we're going to say for each cell, for now, we're going to console.log the cell, which is obviously, or well, of course, one of these right here. So we can refresh this one and we get every individual piece of data printed out to the console. All right. So the next step will be to create the, um, the table row and the um, table cell elements. Okay, so um, for each row, we're going to make a new TR element. So let's make a new constant. We'll call this one TR equal to document.create elements. We're going to create a TR element. Okay, so at the end of this loop down here, we can then append this table um, this table row to the table body. So we'll say rankings body dot append child. We're going to append the TR right there. So now inside here, we can populate the table row. So let's make a new constant. We'll call this one TD equal to document dot create element. We're going to create a TD tag. Okay. One of these guys right here. So, um, to insert the text of the actual cell, we can say td.textContent is equal to the cell, that one right there. All right. Then we can simply say tr, so um, the parent table row, dot append child. We're going to append the table cell to, so td to that tr. All right. So now, if 
we save this and refresh, we should see our desired result. There we are, right there. Okay, so pretty cool. Um, so the whole point of this is to actually be able to change the data of obviously your application without affecting or touching the HTML because um, you want to actually clear all this stuff out and then maybe say we'll add a comment and say um, to be filled by um, JavaScript. So we have no data in the table. So we're separating the actual data from the HTML markup. So now to actually change a value, obviously we go inside here and then just change Mary from 712 to something like 340. Save and refresh and the data is changed without touching the HTML. All right, and that is how you can populate an HTML table using Ajax. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.